little while back, I made a video called How I Would Fix Hearthstone Duels, which proposed a number of changes to the duels format. This video included an overhaul of the signature and passive treasure systems. I then made a follow-up video where I presented all the new signature treasures I'd made, except for a druid which I forgot about. And the plan was to make a third video where I'd also be showcasing all the new passive treasures for each class. But then I heard the horrible news. Blizzard announced that they would be cancelling the duels format. This was disappointing not only because I was planning on doing that third video, but also because duels used to be my favorite game mode and it's really sad to see Blizzard giving up on it. But I haven't. I'm going to continue trying to fix duels, this time with some brand new passive treasures. So welcome to how I would fix Hearthstone duels part 3. The idea is that new passive treasures would be added for each class and you'd be able to select these treasures if you play a hero of the same class. I've made 44 new passive treasures, 4 for each class, and I imagine these treasures would be more likely to appear than neutral treasures. Because there's gonna be so many passive treasures, I'll only talk about the ones I feel need explanation. Let's dive right into it with the passive treasures for Death Knight. Each class gets two new passives for each pool. For the first pool, Death Knight gets Experimental Science and Haunted Harvest. And for the second pool, they get Sanguine Embrace and Soul Transfer. Sanguine Embrace will cause any excess health restored to your hero to be added to your maximum health total instead. This means that if you had, say, 29 out of your 30 maximum health and they restored 4 health to your hero, you'd now have 30 health but a maximum of 33. The treasure Haunted Harvest will trigger at the start of your third turn and give you 5 corpses and add a corpse farm spell to your hand. There's gonna be a couple treasures like this that activate on a certain turn. Demon Hunter gets the passive treasure Spell Infused Diary and Soul Eater Sermon for Pool 1 and Backup Squad and Cosmic Chaos for Pool 2. Cosmic Chaos causes your hero to keep half of the attack you had on your turn during the opponent's turn, rounded up of course. The Pool 1 treasure Soul Eater Sermon will trigger when the game starts and then replace all minions in your deck with Bound Soul Spells. The Bound Souls are one mana spells that will discover one of the minions removed, but can only discover each minion once. Now for the passive treasures for Hunter. Hunter gets the pool 1 passives Scavenger Hunt and Unguru Top Hit, and the pool 2 passives Enhanced Ammunition and Trapper's Flute. Enhanced Ammunition will trigger at the end of each of your turns and then add a random shot spell to your hand. The shot spells are any hunter spells with the word shot in their names. The pool 1 passive scavenger hunt would trigger at the start of your third turn and then summon a 2-1 starving buzzard and add an unleash the hound spell to your hand. Starving buzzard has changed a bit since I last saw it, but it still works alongside unleash the hounds for a powerful combo. Mage gets the passive treasures book of whispers and magma sample for pool 1 and Frozen Supplies and Sift Scepter for Pool 2. The passive Book of Whispers will activate on your third turn and then summon two 1-2 Secret Keepers and add a random mage secret to your hand. Magma Sample on the other hand will trigger when the game starts and shuffle 5 Wildfire spells into your deck and reduce their cost to zero. For Paladin I made the new passive treasures Scarlet Ensemble and Thekal's Golden Mask for Pool 1 and Medal of Valor and the Holy Libran for Pool 2. The Holy Libran will trigger at the end of your turns and not give you Libramps despite its name, but will add a random blessing spell to your hand. The blessing spells are any Paladin spells with the word blessing in their names. Now for Priest's passive treasures. Goblet of Envy and Test Slap for the first pool and Codex of the Void and Medical Kit for the second pool. The pool 2 passive Codex of the Void would trigger at the end of each of your turns and then add a random Shadow Word spell to your hand. It probably doesn't come as a shocker that the Shadow Word spells are any priest spells with the phrase Shadow Word in their names. The pool 1 passive Test Lab would trigger at the start of your first turn and then summon a 0-2 Test Subject and add a random Power Word spell to your hand. The Power Word spells are... I think you get it at this point. Rogue gets the pool 1 passives, forced legislation and the return of the banned version of Sticky Fingers. 
Additionally, they get putrescites pharmaceutics and venomous wares for pool 2. Putrescites pharmaceutics will trigger at the end of your turn and then add a random concoction to your hand. If you forgot about them, concoctions were special token spells from back in March of the Lich King that merged together. Venomous wares will trigger after you equip a weapon and then let you discover a poison spell. I'm not even gonna say it this time, you can just see them for yourself. For Shaman we have the return of the banned passive Everchanging Elixir as well as the new passive It's Elementary for Pool 1 and Flame Reef Transfusion and Tiki Bar for Pool 2. It's Elementary will cause all your effects that rely on having played an elemental last turn to always trigger. For cards that look at how many turns in a row you've played an elemental, this will only count for one turn. Flame Reef Transfusion is a bit of an experiment. It will cause all your non-totem minions to have 7-7 seven, seven stats and cost 4 mana but will overload for 2. It says non-totem minions so it doesn't affect the minions summoned from any of the shaman hero powers since they're all totems. I'm not really sure how this treasure will perform especially with the hero power that causes you not to overload but why not have some fun right? Also for the memes! Warlock gets the pool 1 passives, Glanathel's Chalice and Rin's Sigted Ring and the pool 2 passives, Portal to Fill and Soul Serenade. Soul Serenade will trigger at the start of the game and increase your hero's maximum health by 10 and then shuffle 5 soul fragments into your deck. Rin's Sigted Ring will also trigger at the start of your game, specifically your first turn, and will add the first seal to your hand. The first seal was created by Rin the First Disciple all the way back in Kobolds and Catacombs and will give you the second seal when played, which will then give you the third seal and then the fourth until you get to the final seal which will add Asari the Devourer to your hand, which will destroy your opponent's deck when played. Now for the final class, Warrior. Warrior gets Dr. Boom's Bomb in a Box and Scrap Repurposing for Pool 1 and Hellscream's Choker and Ralgor's Teachings for Pool 2. The Pool 1 passive Dr. Boom's Bomb in a Box will trigger whenever you shuffle a card into your opponent's deck, such as bombs, and will then summon a 1-1 Boom bot. I bet you thought I was about to forget about Druid again. Here are the treasures for Druid, Crystallized Sapling and Tome of Scenarios for Pool 1, and Celestial Mastery and Fandral's Flame Scythe for Pool 2. Crystallized Sapling will summon the minion Lucen Bark at the start of the game, but he will be summoned dormant. After you restore 5 health, he will awaken. The Pool 2 Treasure Celestial Mastery will trigger at the end of each of your turns, but with different results on even and odd turns. At the end of even turns, it will add a Lunar Eclipse spell to your hand, but at the end of odd turns, it will add a Solar Eclipse to your hand. Since I forgot about Druid last time, I decided to make an extra treasure for them this time around, for the ultra rare second pool. It's Savage Fury. Well that's all for this episode. While those were all the passive treasures I made, if this update was introduced to the game I imagine more class specific passives would be added and older ones changed for the sake of flavor. Specifically, I imagine each class would also get an ultra rare passive but I already spent a lot of time making all these, so I'll leave the rest for your imagination. Thanks for watching, leave a comment and a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to the channel for more custom Hearthstone content. See ya next time!